using a barrier, using a birth control method, and telling God, we don't want you a part of this either because we know you bring the kid. So how do you do, the, I mean like, my other Catholic friends are like, yeah, like I just, they just have a gang of kids. The things you need for to be moral are babies and bonding. Like I went to the dentist the other day, he puts his fingers in my mouth. We don't become one flesh, we're not united. <laughs> Bruce Lawn. Protestants may do birth control, may not do birth control. Me and my wife don't do birth control. We just think it's, yeah. I, not a fan. Um, but barrier methods, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the cycle, um, keeping track of the woman's cycle and being careful when she's on her, uh, when she's fertile, right? Right. And, and Catholics are no on that. Is that a fair we're, assessment? We're Catholics believe that God gave us our, and so we should not misuse it. And so God gave us, as you and me as men, He basically gave us fertility from the time we hit puberty mm -hmm. until we have like one foot in the grave, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And He gave our wives, uh, different fertility throughout the month. Mm -hmm. And so he gave us all of those days to be intimate with our, our spouse, with mm -hmm. our wives. Uh, some days, uh, I mean, he gave us reason mm -hmm. to discover when uh, engaging in the marital act might lead to a child and it might not. Mm -hmm. So what the church teaches is that you cannot sterilize the marital act. Okay. So you can't intervene in a way so that using a barrier method mm -hmm. or a birth control pill something that's designed to sterilize it. Mm -hmm. But if God gave us a day where my wife might be very fertile, maybe we're really open to having mm -hmm. children, or gave me a day where she's not as fertile, mm -hmm. he still gave us that day to be intimate with one another. Mm -hmm. To give you an analogy, an analogy I like to use is, and other Catholic thinkers have used this as well, is like a, a wedding invitation. Mm -hmm. So if you think about uh, being, you know, diff women have their cycles, so they have different levels of fertility. Mm -hmm. Uh, some days when you're intimate, you're probably, there's a really good chance you'll have a baby. Mm -hmm. Other days you might not. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're planning a wedding. So mm -hmm. I've been married for about 10 years now. And mm -hmm. I, and I remember, you know, planning all this and you send it and you send an invitation to friends. You're worried about, you know, you want, you invite people to a wedding. It's like, how many people can we really handle at this thing? Yep. It's like, we'll just, we got to cut the guest list down. So you send an invite to your cousins and it's a, and you pick a day for the wedding that, you know, yeah, they can definitely attend, mm -hmm. and they're going to be there. That would be like being intimate on a fertile day. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's say you're like, oh, I don't know if we can have that many people at our wedding. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I would still love for our cousins to attend. I think if we, you and you send an invitation knowing that they might not be able to attend, let's say they got a football game, mm -hmm. that would be like being intimate on a your wife's infertile day. Like they pro, you know, the cousins they probably they might not be able to come to the wedding. Mm -hmm. They probably can't. But if they do. Hey, that's still great. Sure. I love that they're there. Might be a little stressful. Sure. But it's still great that they're there. Yep. But you know, and then, but let's say I said, okay, I want to have, we want to have our wedding on this day, but you know what? I don't want your cousins to be there. Uh -huh. I def so we send them a disinvitation. Okay. So we say, look, we're doing the wedding on this day. Please don't come. Yep. We don't want you there. That's way too stressful. Yep. So the analogy, so that would be like contraception. Got it. That would be like saying to our future child, we don't want you here. Sure. We, sure. you, know, you know, using a barrier, using a birth control method and telling God, we don't want you a part of this either because we know you bring the kid with yeah. you. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well. So you can space families. You can, and the church teaches you, sh you can responsibly space your so, families. So that's my next question. Yeah. Like me and my wife, mm -hmm. uh, we don't use uh, birth control, but every time we had a baby, we knew she's fertile. There's going to be a baby if we have sex on this night. That's right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how do you do the, I mean, like, like I, my other Catholic friends are like, yeah, like I just, they just have a gang of kids, you know, <laughs> they just, <laughs> well, they're di down for all the kids God would give them. There, there's is different, that... there's different methods that you can okay. use. So there's, this is called natural family planning okay. and it's different than what's called the rhythm method. That was an older method that's okay. not as reliable. Okay. And there's different methods that are used to basically chart someone's fertility. Yep. Some of them are used actually to help you become pregnant. Right. So they're used to figure out, hey, if you're dealing, because what's great about NFP is that for a lot of people, like, oh, I'm not getting pregnant. Like, we actually struggled with tertiary infertility. Okay. So we had, so first kid, bam, right out the gate. Mm -hmm. Second kid, bam, right out the gate. Mm -hmm. And I thought, like, you know, being Catholic, you just have your own little basketball team of kids. <laughs> you know, that's what you think is going to happen. Yeah. And then we're just like, wow, a year's gone by, and like mm -hmm. we're not getting pregnant. Like, mm -hmm. what is going on mm -hmm. here? And we thought, because it's something when you think of infertility, you think of just like people who can never have kids. Right, right, right. right. But a lot of people struggle. They can have one or two. Then after that, it's like, what's going on mm -hmm. here? Like, mm -hmm. what's happening? Mm -hmm. So we were struggling with tertiary infertility, and you can use these methods to find out. Okay, don't miss this day. This is going to be your best chance. Right. But you can also use the methods to space out. And the church teaches that. 
you, God gave us on skin rational minds. You know, if he you wants, can't afford a bunch of kids, right? And you need to provide for them. Out. And it's not just like it's not just like feeding them too. It's like, can I provide an education yeah, for yeah, them? Yeah. Yep. So I'm not throwing them into like a public school where things yes. are just awful. Yes. You know, can I give them that that Christian upbringing? So, uh, so we use actually the Creighton method, okay. and so we find that it's very, it's very helpful and it's easy to use. They use the same method like in India mm -hmm. with like people who can't even read mm -hmm. to like just use stickers on a chart to measure your own body signs, mm -hmm. and it's really cool. And it also teaches you just a wonderful sense of cherishing each other mm -hmm. and self control. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's been a real blessing to army. It, I mean, it's difficult, yeah, but it's kind of like anything. It's sure. like exercise is difficult. But it pays off when you put that work Amen. in. Amen. And it's the same thing with using natural family plan. Use your minds to plan out your family in accord with God's plan for our sexuality. And so on a day your wife is fertile uh, and you guys say, hypothetically, you have five kids, two yeah. kids, and you're like, yeah, dude, like it's, it's going to be rough adding more to the team. Yeah. You would then just avoid intercourse. Right, so we, would just, so we would just abstain during that period. Respect. So Yeah, so okay. it's either, so you would... Um, and that makes sense that in your married life, there's going to be times where you have to practice abstinence. Sure. And I think that's hard for a lot of Christian guys. They might think, let's say they struggle with, mm -hmm. they struggle with, and they think, oh, when I get married, you know, I'm going to be okay. Everything's fine then because I can have. That's the absolute wrong attitude to have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because, because then when you, you still got to practice self control after kids. After, right. Because yeah. what happens when. Your wife, because after your wife has a baby, mm -hmm. you need to abstain for Amen. like six weeks, yeah, at least. At least. Yep. Or let's say your wife is sick, or mm -hmm. you're visiting, you know, her parents, and you're staying in the extra room next to them. Yep. You're always going to be practicing, or you know, you, you meet someone at work that's you know really cute. It's mm -hmm. like you're always going to be yep. needing to practice self control. Yeah. In your life as a Christian. Yeah. We and I talk about that rather frequently with guys on my channel. Hey, like, work the out kill that early don't yes don't, don't play with this sort of stuff and then take it into your marriage and then just assume marriage is going to fix it all so i'm 100 percent with you real funny part and i don't want to get too into the weeds here <laughs> but do you know what the number one app was in the apple store the <sighs> weekend of roe v wade passing or getting overturned i don't even want to know what was it a fertility tracking tra tracking app oh yeah who would have thought well it makes people, <laughs> well you know it's funny online people were saying if is made illegal, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hook up with guys right. anymore. That's gonna teach you. Yeah. I'm like, great. I don't. Oh, that's the punishment. Yeah. People aren't gonna hook up anymore. Yeah, yeah they lost okay. it on on with the positivity. But who would have thought that women could keep track of their cycles and be responsible? Right, and understanding <laughs> our not just women, but like all of us. But all it's yeah. all of us yeah. uh, to understand the gift of our sexuality and just our culture when it looks at sexuality. It just, it, it's so funny, our culture is of two minds mm -hmm. about sexuality. On the one hand, they want to say, do whatever you want, as long as you're consenting. It's just about feeling good. It's a, what works for you. You do you. Mm -hmm. uh, and they'll say, as long as you're just consenting, then, then that's fine. But they have a bunch of other unwritten rules as well. Mm -hmm. So for ex I think the biggest one here is that sex is not just for pleasure or even just showing love is that our, our culture in general still thinks infidelity is really bad. Mm -hmm. Like, even among non-Christians, yeah. oh, yeah. like, most people will say, yeah, you're de that's, you really did a bad thing. Even, like, asking your wife if you can be unfaithful mm -hmm. to take a break. Like, most regular people sure. will say, dude, that's not okay. Yep. But think about it. What if you said, well, I'm allowed to have more than one friend. Mm -hmm. I have lots of friends. Mm -hmm. Why can't I have lots of girlfriends? Or why can't I have lots of relationships? Yep. Uh, you know, and it and it's so funny. Like our kids even wonder about this. They'll say like, you know, do you, they ask, do you love me like you love Daddy? Mm -hmm. And my wife says, well, no, I love you, mm -hmm. but like, different, you know, you can love kind of love. <laughs> it is. It's like the love you can have lots of friends. Yep. You can love lots of friends. Yep. You can love lots of kids. You can't love lots of yep. partners yep. because that love is is for having. So people ask me. I'll ask people. I'm doing a video on this soon uh, called What Is. Mm -hmm. Like I went, I went down to San Diego State University, and I asked college students, "What is it for?" Mm -hmm. And it was funny; they would say procreation, and then, but but maybe not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like they knew they didn't want to be boxed yeah. in. And so my answer to the question is, this is for the expression of marital love. Amen. That's so. Amen. It's not just for pleasure, or even just expressing love, because you don't give that out to everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, otherwise, you know, you're being unfaithful or things are weird. Sure. It's for the and what marital love is different than other loves. Yeah. Like let's say the love of friendship. Love mm -hmm. all love desires union. If you think about it, yep. like 
So if I love, you know, you love mate right here. Amen. You want to be united with it. So you drink I it. Drink it. Yeah. So when you Probably love something. too much of it. Right. But when you love something, <laughs> you want to be united. Like yes. if you said you love a friend, but you yes. haven't called them in years. Right. You don't really love them. Yep. You know, but you when you love a friend, you want to spend time with them. You want to yep. talk with them. It's good. So when you love your spouse, that what makes that love special is that it's bodily union. Mm. And what makes it a real union is not just one body part inside another body part. Like I went to the dentist the other day. He puts his fingers in my mouth. Yeah. We don't become one flesh. We're not united. <laughs> not one body part. Or if a surgeon puts his hand inside yeah. you, yeah. you're not united. You're yeah. not a one. That's not a one. F- like as the Bible says in Genesis. Yeah. And the two became one flesh. Right. Like that's not poetry. When a man and a woman engage in the marital act in intercourse, they become their reproductive systems that are incomplete on their own now become complete. Mm. They're ordered towards something beyond themselves. And that's where sex has its its correct expression for marital love. And now we have that natural law foundation mm-hmm. to say, well, is this ordered in homosexuality yeah. or in contraception? Yeah. Or So what the church teaches is that the things you need for sex to be moral are... Hey guys, right now I'm in Jerusalem, but I wanted to let you know that our Bless God shop is fully in stock we got some brand new items we got some new colorways a lot of you guys ask about the merch sometimes it sells out sometimes we're not able to keep up with demand so here's your chance to scoop some up before it sells out so hit the pinned comment for the link or the description or just go to blessgod.shop scoop up some merch high quality stuff it's not no fast fashion it's not gonna fall apart it's gonna last you i've been wearing my hoodies as you see for years all right it's a great way to support what we're doing here at bless god studios now back to our regularly scheduled programming so what the church teaches is that the things you need for to be moral are babies and bonding you got to be open. You got to be open to babies, and you got to be united to each other. You take you take away either one, mm-hmm. it's disordered. So if you make a baby in an IVF lab with you know little petri dishes, mm-hmm. and a lot of them end up getting destroyed, mm-hmm. that would be you have the babies but no bonding. Mm. But if you do, I forgot you guys were against that too, right? Okay. Because we believe that children have a right not just to you know it's like is wrong because a child has a right to life. Yeah. But he also has a right to live in his mother's body. He has a right to come. A child has a right to come into existence through the marital act. Got it. So if you think about it, like one of the reasons adultery and fornication are wrong mm-hmm. is that you can make a baby out of an affair, mm-hmm. out of a hookup. Mm-hmm. A baby has a right that the moment he comes into existence, he can turn around. Well, I mean, he can't turn around. He's a baby. But if he could, mm-hmm. he would see. Here's a mom and a dad. They are irreplaceable to him. Mm. If they died, you know, we do our best to come up with someone else to watch that child. But no one can ever, no one can ever really replace them. Sorry, I was putting my phone on. Do not disturb. And how disturbed. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're okay. good. So that mom and dad, right? If they died, we do our best, but no one can ever truly replace them. Yeah. So it makes sense that this baby comes into existence and, you know, the mom and dad are, we need something to make them irreplaceable to each other before they become irreplaceable to this child. And that is what marriage is for. Yeah. I mean, you're right. It is a very consistent, cohesive uh, view of, of all these things. Right? Yeah. And so I, I, I do appreciate that. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to speak with you is yeah. to have, to hear it from the horse's mouth. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because I think there's a lot of straw manning that happens. Whenever I reference anything slightly Catholic on my channel, yeah. I just get a ton of comments of like, sure. they're this, they do this, they believe this. So on and so forth, and so yeah. Um, I have a co- I have a couple questions around that to to, sure. to ask you that I've, I've I've asked a couple of other Catholic friends and they've never really had like a a, a good uh a, an answer. Okay. Um, and then I have some things that maybe if we have time I'd like for you to react to. Now, if you want to hear the full version unedited, it gets spicy. Hit the link in the description and sign up for our Patreon community. It's only $5 a month. It comes with a discount to the store, access to our Discord, and the full version of this and other interviews from our podcast. All right? I'll see you over there. Peace. And it says that Simeon blessed God.